Well, hello, Bungonia and beyond. I just thought I'd make a short video while we're all probably stuck inside uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, this is just really to get back to the original problem of the bushfires, which is uh, an important one which will get back to us come next summer. So I just wanted to show you uh, an idea I had, which uh, might help some of you with your homes and bushfire protecting your homes. So it's basically your old sprinkler on the roof idea. It's just that I got a bit frustrated that um, every time you were told to evacuate, you had the sprinkler on the roof, but you really weren't there to turn it on. So this is an automatic system that will turn it on when you're not there. So I'll just show you, as you normally have in these systems, you've got a series of sprinklers on the roof. Now I prefer to put them inside the hoses inside the roof because you'll find that a lot of people stick them outside on the roof and that you see these old uh, perished uh, hoses that are really ready just to burst the first moment they're used. So you have your sprinklers on the roof as per normal. This, this roof's quite big so I've got three of these rotating steel copper headed sprinklers. Now the rest of the system is really where it starts getting interesting. So you can see here this is an automatic temperature sensor. It has attached to it this little uh, sensor that will pick up radiant heat. Now in this case it's on the edge of the building which is uh, facing the bushland and I would encourage everybody to obviously cut back further than what I have. I'm actually in the process of doing that and um, cut back to, you know, I guess 50 metres is an ideal distance from your home. But uh, this doesn't replace all those smart things that you should be doing anyway. So this sensor here, if I just show you how this works, it's probably flicking around a little bit because of the, the video uh, frequency, but um, you can see I can set it. At the moment it's set to, this bottom temperature is set to 50 degrees, which is the anticipated radiant heat that may come from the bush top temperature is the current temperature. So if I just change it so I can demonstrate to you, that shows you temperatures in Fahrenheit. If I just reset the bottom temperature to closer to the current temperature, whoop, wrong way, go back down again. So heading back down to 20 degrees, and as soon as we hit, well, we're getting close. There we go, you can see And here, the sprinklers have all come on. I'll just reset that back to 50 degrees, where it should be. The sprinklers turn off. So the idea is that once the radiant heat gets the temperature to, well, well let's just say 50 degrees, It'll, it'll activate the system. How does it actually work? I'll show you in just a second. If you're on mains power, you wanna really consider getting a, a set of batteries or one, just one decent 12 volt uh, deep cycle battery that's connected to one solar panel that's just there ready when you need it. In this case, my house has already got um, this um, full battery system. So that you have to consider in a fire, you won't, have, you won't have power as in mains power. You need to rely on your own power. And this system, as one that you should set up, should rely on its own power. And a, a, generally, you'll find a de decent 12-volt uh, deep cycle battery will really run that pump for you know, five or six hours. An important point is to make sure you have sensors on each side of the house, or at least, you know, there's a sensor just sitting in under this little sheltered bracket. You can probably just see it in there. And that sensor is picking up the ambient heat from this side of the house which as you can see again is far too close to the bush and uh, these trees are all going to get cut back pretty shortly. So the sensor is connected to this uh, thin, it's actually a telecom, old Telstra solid core wire which comes back all the way down into this control area which is just, um, this is the key part here you need to know about, this is a solenoid which is a very common device you would use in your home um, automatic watering systems. It's just connected to these temperature sensor and that goes into a demand pump. So the demand pump is always on 
once the solenoid opens, which when it gets a signal from the from the uh, temperature sensor, it opens up. The water then just passes freely up through the thick pipe. You can't use thin pipes on this. You've got to go to one inch pipes. Uh, it just makes it a lot more reliable, a lot more efficient. And then uh, the roof come, the roof uh, gets wetted, and so does the surrounding area if it shoots beyond the roof. The water usually just recycles back into the tank. In this case, it's a 20,000 litre tank. And so that way the water, most of it at least, goes back into the system. Once the temperature in the outside area reaches a normal temperature, like once the fire front passes, this is the idea anyway, haven't tested it out yet, um, once the temperature reaches a normal, you know, ambient temperature, the sensor will go back down to a below that threshold and turn off the uh, off the system. So the big question is how much does it all cost? So here's a summary of what you need to buy and how much it costs. If you have any questions, just uh, contact me uh, directly through uh, my message messages on Facebook and I'll be happy to help you put it together.